Hi everybody and welcome to Mr. Stansfield's educational videos. Today we're going to take a look at how to create a layer mask to do a digital version of a weaving print. So a lot of the time we do this effect by taking two prints, printing them out, cutting them up, and actually physically weaving them together. But there's a fairly easy way to do this in Photoshop. And so this is the final product. I'm going to sort of back off and uh, show you how I got here. So the first thing, um, well, there are a couple of things to actually note here. We're looking in the layers palette. And there are a couple of shortcut keys that are pretty key to working anytime you're working with layers. And it is com command click, option click, and shift click. And if you look at this layer mask right here, uh, first of all, I'm just going to click on the eyeball to get rid of the curves. You can see I just wanted to brighten the image, the overall image up. So that's what that curves layer is there for. I'm just going to delete it actually so it simplifies things a little bit. And you can see I've labeled these vertical and horizontal. And if I take the um, eyeball off of the vertical, you can see I'm left with the horizontal. And I have this black background right here. So um, really quickly, I wanted to show you if you option click a layer mask, it will show you the layer mask. And now we're looking at the layer mask itself. If I option click again, it's going to bring me back to the regular thing. Shift clicking a layer mask will turn it off. So let's turn both of these layer masks off for a second and pretend like they're not there, like we haven't done it yet. One of the things that you can do is just take this vertical one or the top layer, whichever one's on top, and simply change the opacity. And this is a pretty interesting effect here because you get the, the overlay and the double exposure happening really, really simply. Let's talk about how we actually got these layer masks though. So I'm gonna shift click again and bring them back. Here's our final product. And what I'm gonna do is actually fill both with white because that's what a layer mask starts out as. And I'm gonna do it with a shortcut key. Um, I'm going to hit D on the keyboard, which you can't see as doing anything, but actually here, it, if you have any other colors in your foreground and background, it will default so that white is in the foreground and black is in the background, D for default. And then you could go edit fill. You could do edit fill or shift F5 is the shortcut key you can see right here. But actually, when I'm working with layer masks, I like to know the two shortcut keys, option delete and command delete. So I'm going to option delete. And it's going to fill with white and then i click here and i option delete and it fills with white and then you can fill with black by hitting command delete you can see there command delete and then option delete so those shortcut keys i think are really useful whenever you're working with a layer mask and now let's go ahead and take the eyeball off the vertical let's just work on the horizontal here and i'm going to use the uh, rectangular marquee tool to create a, a, a layer mask and the goal here is to create that checkerboard that I showed you before. And there's a couple of things we want to look at. We want to have um, up here view, and you can see here I've got selected rulers. And what that means is view rulers. Um, there's a shortcut key command R. You can see that actually up here at the top, and actually if I hit the tab key to get rid of my tools, you can see it starts at zero and then it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you can see that it's exactly eight inches and then down here it's 10 inches. So the rulers help to tell me what the full size of the image is. And actually let, let's back up a little bit. I specifically made this image a, uh, uh, an even numbered size. So I made it eight by 10. And if you don't know how to do that, um, I'll maybe put that in another video, but it, it really helps, you'll see why in a minute, to have an even number on both sides, the 8 by 10. Um, and in terms of the image size, I've got it at 300 pixels per inch, so it's ready to print at 8 by 10. Um, sizing your image first, you'll see at the next step why that is important. So I'm going to go back to um, view, and then I'm going to say show, and I want to show my grid. And you can see there's a a shortcut key which is I think command apostrophe and you can see now it's going to give me a grid every inch if there's a there's a wider line and then every fourth of an inch there's a smaller line so you could theoretically if you wanted to do a quarter inch uh, weave uh, 
as small as, and you'll see it's gonna be really easy to do. In this case, I'm gonna do an inch weave, and here's how I'm gonna do it. Now, I just hit the tab key to get rid of my tools. I don't really need them, but I wanna make sure that I'm back on the right thing here. I have the layer mask selected on the horizontal. So it says horizontal, so I'm gonna make horizontal selections, and I've got the rectangular marquee tool, and then I just click and drag. No pixels were selected. All right, what happened there? Command zero, because I lost my spot. I think I just clicked outside of the photo. I think that's maybe what's going on. There we go. All right, and then you can see it snaps to that line because that grid's there. So by having the grid in place, it allows for this selection process to go really quickly. Um, it's only gonna take me a few more seconds to add the selections. Now, um, other shortcut keys that are really key when using any selection is shift, and option. So I'm going to hold the shift key and you can see if you look really closely you're next to the mouse, the little cross there, that a little plus sign pops up. So basically by holding the shift key I can add the selection. Down here it actually gets a little bit hard to see so I'm going to count one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four to keep the even. And there we go. Oops, I lost this part down here at the bottom. There we go. And you can see by having the grid, it'll just make a perfect extension all the way to the end. So now I've got horizontal selections made. Um, now, if I was cutting this out, I would just, you know, cut those horizontal selections and then weave it. The problem is here, I actually, the end result of a weave is that every other square inch is a different part of the image. So I've made a selection here, and I'm going to add to the selection... Um, by clicking here and not doing that. I'm going to hit Command-0. I'm going to hit Command-minus a couple times, so I've got a little bit easier thing to work with here. I'm also going to hit the Tab key to get rid of those tools. And I'm just going to add to this. So I'm going to do the same thing with the vertical. And you'll see we're actually going to back up from this in just a minute. Okay, is that right? Yes, it is. Okay, one, two, three, four. This gets a little bit confusing here, but basically I want to create a selection of every other square. So right now, um, if you look up here at the top, the selection is not every other square, but it's got all of the vertical, all of the horizontal lines, and then every other of the next line. Well, the next thing I need to do is actually hold the Option key to subtract from the selection. So here, this is selected, and then the next square I want to deselect, and then every other square I'm going to deselect. Now, couldn't you just do this from the beginning? Actually, yes. Um, you could, and it might make sense for you to do that. Um, I'm holding the Option key, and I'm just going through and deselecting every other row. If you do it, I think this way will save you just a little bit of time, not much time, but a little bit of time, and whatever. You could try it if you wanted to. Just do every other square here. It's every other square on every other row. And you'll see once we fill it, once we're done with the selection, we're gonna fill it. Um, it'll be clear, going back to my original shortcut keys of command clicking and shift clicking on the layer mask. I'm gonna hit the tab key again, here we go. I select the layer mask, and then because I hit D for default, I've got the black in the back. I wanna fill my selection now with black by hitting the uh, holding option and then delete. Oops, command delete, sorry, command delete. And there you can see that I've made a perfect checker selection. I'm going to hold the um, sh -ch 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 option key and click on the layer mask. Here's my layer mask. Now the next part is going to go so much faster. Watch this. Okay, I'm going to hit, hit Command D for deselect or select deselect. That was what I did right there. Um, I'm going to Command click on the layer mask so I can see the whole thing. I'm going to then one more time. Um, oops, I meant option click to make the layer mask come back. I'm going to hold the command key and click now. It's going to make a selection. I'm going to click on this vertical layer, layer mask, fill with black, is that it? Do I need to invert it? No, that was it. Okay, so all I did was I made a selection of this layer Oh, it automatically inverted it. Okay, so I command, after I deselected everything, I command clicked on this layer. It made a selection. I went to the vertical layer mask, and then I filled with black. 
And if you look at the difference between these layer masks, there's one, and then there's the other one. So you can actually look at this top corner. On the bottom horizontal layer, it's white, and on the top, it's black. <laughs>